exercise 4.5. We'll take care of learning objective number five. Compute the break-even point. Maxon Products distributes a single product, a woven basket. Its selling price is eight bucks, and its variable cost per unit is six bucks. So let me make a note of that. Selling price, uh, we're told, is eight dollars. I'll call that 100 percent. Variable cost is six dollars. I will call that 75 percent. And our contribution margin per unit, as a result, will be two dollars or 25% on the contribution margin ratio. This is the CMR, this is the CM contribution margin per unit. And the company's monthly fixed expense is $5,500. So we have a fixed cost of $5,500. Number one required. Let's see what, what, what they want us to do here. Number one, solve the company's break-even point in unit sales using the equation method. Okay, so let's make a note that we're using the equation method. Remember, we learned the formula method and the equation method, and we want to solve the break-even point in unit sales, how many units we have to sell. So we need to solve for a quantity, Q, right? So our sales are 8Q. And at break even, our sales equal our variable costs plus our fixed costs. So our variable costs are 6Q plus 5,500, right? So 2Q will equal 5,500. That means Q will equal 2,750. That's the break even point in unit sales using the equation method. Number two. Solve for the company's break-even point in sales dollars using the equation method and the contribution margin ratio. So we have to solve for dollars now. When we solve for units, we're solving for Q. When we solve for dollars, remember we let X equal sales. So sales X equals our variable costs plus our fixed costs. Our variable costs are 0.75X plus 5,500. That leaves 0.25x. You'll notice the 0.25 is our contribution margin ratio. Equals 5,500. So x equals 5,500 over 0.25. Now, I want to point something out to you. This is the equation method, right? But look what this is. This is fixed costs, 5,500, over the contribution margin ratio. There's the formula. So the equation comes down to the formula anyways. The formulas simply start from these bottom lines. We don't worry about this top business, right? So here, x will equal $22,000. There we go. So there's the equation method in both units and sales. Number three, solve the company's break-even point in unit sales using the formula method. Well, we've already uh, seen this one here. This is the formula method for sales, but Number three, look how easy this is. We just start with our fixed costs over our contribution margin per unit. Our fixed costs will equal 5,500. Contribution margin per unit is two. Well, that's all this is over here. So what will we get? 2750. And number four wants us to solve in dollars. And we already know it's this right here, fixed costs over contribution margin ratio. Since this is what this was, we can't help but get to $22,000. So the equation method simply works its way down to the formula anyways. So if you say, I can't, I, I don't understand the equation method and the formula method, I'm just going to use one, I would say, listen, understand the equation method, because the equation method settles down to the formula method anyways. The formula is within the equation method. So I've just eliminated the need to learn the formula method because it is in the equation method, right? Bravo. We're going to do exercise 4.6, learning objective number 6. Okay, let's see what we got for 4.6. Compute the level of sales required to attain a target profit. That's ah, easy, right? Ing, N-G, Ing. Corporation produces and sells only one product. Its selling price is $100. Let me make a note of that. Selling price is $100. And its variable cost is 80 bucks. 
less the variable costs of 80 bucks, I'll get a contribution margin per unit of 20. The monthly fixed expense is $20,000, so my fixed cost is $20,000. Required, number one, using the equation method. Using the equation method, solve for the unit sales that are required to earn a target profit before tax of 3,000. So we're solving for Q, right? So our selling price is 100, so 100 Q, our sales must equal our variable costs, 80 Q, plus our fixed costs, that's break even. We want a target profit, it's telling us that we want a target profit of 3,000, there's break even, so to get a target profit of 3,000, we simply just add another 3,000 on. So 20 Q will equal $23,000. Q will equal 1,150 1, units. Look how simple that was, right? Let's go on to the next one and see what we're being asked there. Number two, using the formula method, solve for the dollar sales that are required to earn a target profit before tax of $4,000. So the formula method is really just our fixed costs plus our target profit over, and we're being asked here, the solve for the dollar sales, so it's dollar sales, so we need the contribution margin ratio. That will equal 20,000 plus our 3,000 over our contribution margin ratio. Now, we haven't figured that out, but it's easy enough. If we put 100% here, that's 80 bucks, so it must be 80% and 20%. So we divide by 0.2. So we'll get 23,000 divided by 0.2. And you'll find that that comes to $115,000. So there's number two. Notice that the formula method, the fixed cost plus the uh, target profit is the same. This is that amount up here, which is the 23,000. And we're dividing by 20. Remember, Q equals 23,000 divided by the 20. Well, there's the 20. There's the 0.2. It's the same thing, so it's within it. The formula method is within the equation method. Number three, using the formula method, calculate the number of units that need to be sold to earn an after-tax income of $6,000, assuming a tax rate of 25%. Well, it's our fixed costs plus, now keep in mind our target profit has to be an after-tax target profit. So what we want is we want the before tax. So we take our after tax, our net income, and we divide it by one minus the tax rate over our contribution margin per unit. So our fixed costs, we know are $20,000 plus. The amount we want is $6,000 after tax. So at before tax, we need one minus 0.25. We divide it by that, we'll get a larger number right because we're dividing by 0 0.75 so 6,000 divided by 1 is 6,000 6,000 divided by something less than 1 is larger than 6,000 so we don't know what it's going to be but we'll start with the after-tax number of 6,000 divided by something less than 1 and that'll make it a bigger number and of course divided by our contribution margin per unit which is 20 bucks we find that this is 20,000 plus 8,000 over 20 or 28,000 over 20 is 1,400 units. So are we done with the question? Yes, we are. There we go. Now, let's be, uh, let's be very clear about uh, one thing when you're doing these problems. As you're reading the question, make sure that you understand if you're being asked for break-even or target profit in sales or break-even or target profit in units. If you're being asked for it in units, you're using the contribution margin per unit. That is how you keep it straight. Okay, that's a little trick to keep it straight. If you're asked for something in units, you're using units. If you're asked for something in sales, you're using a ratio. That's how we keep it straight. So all you have to do is remember that units have a U in it. Contribution margin per unit, that's break even or target in units. Everything else is the contribution margin ratio. Nice little trick for you, right?